This program was made possible by contributions to your PBS station from viewers like you. Thank you. Commissioner Johnson, what a treat to get you back to the Upper Cumberland. We're right here in Forbes, which is close to Pall Mall, right? Right, close to Pall Mall. That's where I went to elementary school, and that's where Sergeant York, of course, lives. Right, right. And this is your family farm. This is uh, the family farm that I was raised on. It was a general farm. We had hogs, chickens, cattle, dairy cows, did it all back then. Wow. But uh, life has changed, the markets have changed, and this farm has changed. Yes, and I guess that's not an uncommon story, really. No, it's, it's uh, happened all over Tennessee, and it's for the good of the industry. It's right. just how the world progresses. Now, Forbes General Store uh, is, I think, did you tell me your grandfather started that? My grandfather started that in 1892. Wow. And uh, the house was built in 1902. And my grandfather and grandmother lived upstairs of the store until they built the house. Now, that was my grandfather's first wife. Uh, she died after a while of uh, brain cancer. And uh, then later on, uh, my grandfather married a lady from Elgin, Tennessee, over in Morgan County, who was running the depot. And they formed another family and I'm a product of that family. Wow, that's great. Well, you know, I should, I, I didn't give you the, the introduction I should have. You are our 36th Commissioner of Agriculture here in Tennessee. You are appointed by Governor Bill Haslam. But prior to that, you had a 37-year career with Tennessee Farm Bureau Federation, where you were the Chief Administrative Officer, right? Yes. Long I've, career with them. Yes, I've been in the, uh, that part of agriculture for a long time. I, I loved it, uh, the policy side of agriculture, but uh, stayed real close to production agriculture. Uh, after we settled uh, my family estate, my brother continued to run the family farm. I'm back here quite often, even though I don't have my hands uh, truly into the farming operation. Uh, it's a cattle farm this day and time, all of it's in grass. I, when I got out of agriculture, when I got out of college, mm -hmm. I tried to come back to the farm with the hopes of farming. Right. Farm up with my father for about six months. Uh, gave him an idea of going into a fair to finish operation with a uh, swine operation. And he gave me my best education that I had uh, after college. He said, if you couldn't grow a third of your grain that you need to hedge against the price of grain in a hog operation like I was talking to about, uh, we shouldn't do it and he was right. And so I left and uh, went, ended up the Farm Bureau, and worked for them for a long time, working for a lot of farmers across the state. It's been a, it's been a true treasure of a trip. I loved every minute of it. Your, your dad sounds like he was quite an amazing man. He was. Uh, he was uh, a very intelligent guy. He was uh, uh, chairman of the school board here in uh, Fentress County for 18 years. and. Uh, Education was a big part of my family. My mother was a school teacher, and so uh, I was lucky to be born in a family that uh, had education as a high priority. My grandmother, actually, uh, after she had her children here at the farm, uh, decided to move to Jamestown and bought a boarding house and ran a boarding house so she could take her kids to Jamestown for a better education. So education has been a priority all along. Of course, education has improved countywide, and I went to the local community school here at Pall Mall and Forbes, and uh, got a good education. And then where did you go to high school? I went to York High School in Jamestown, and I graduated from there in 1966. How about that? And then you, and you went to UT, right, in the University Knoxville. of Tennessee, yes. And what did you major in there? Animal science. Uh, had the dreams of becoming a, a pre, uh, veterinarian, but uh, didn't hardly have the grades to get into vet school. It was very difficult at that right. time. 
right. and went on to an animal science degree. And it's been a good good career for me. Oh, abs absolutely. I mean, what you've done in agriculture, especially in policy and uh, for our for our state, is just phenomenal. Thank you. And tell me what your vision has been as the Commissioner of Agriculture for our state. Well, it's parallel to what Governor Haslam has as his priorities, and that is to create more jobs in rural America, in rural Tennessee, on the farms, uh, related to the farming activity, whether it's in agribusiness or wherever it is, creating additional jobs to keep people in the rural areas. We're losing a lot of the best and the brightest out of the rural areas to the urban areas where the jobs are, and we need to find ways of reversing that to a certain degree. Governor Haslam's cabinet is really very strong. You're part of that, and, and the, the, I'm sure you work with economic development and yes. education and, and tourism. All of that is part of agriculture, isn't it? Absolutely. One of Governor Haslam's strengths is getting us from working in our silos to crossing department lines, crossing division lines, and making sure that we're uh, taking the assets of all the different departments and divisions working for a common goal. And it's, he's been very effective with that. We've seen a lot of successes with that. And we continually, every day, work with ECND, with uh, other departments that relate to agriculture. And uh, it's been rewarding for us. How important are rural communities? Oh, well, agriculture itself is 13% uh, of the state's economy. It's boarding with tourism about being number one and it creates 363,000 jobs across the state. It's a, a $68 billion industry total impact. It's only 4.2 billion at the farm gate and farm gate receipts, but because of the products that come off the farm that have to be processed, transported, and all the other things we do to them before it gets to Kroger's, those amount of jobs are created. And so it's, it's an important part. Now, in some of our rural counties, it will be as high as 30% to 50% of the total economy. So you certainly, in those rural counties where we're trying to increase economic community development, we've got to make sure that the ag sector stays strong, progresses, and adds more jobs and more opportunity there. Commissioner, I read recently that the farming landscape is really changing, that there's less farmers, there less, it's, there's really less land available to farm. Is that true? Well, yes, in certain respects. Uh, we're looking at the capacity, our capacity in Tennessee of uh, putting more agricultural acres into production. Uh, that's one of uh, our goals is try to measure that more accurately. We have five major urban areas in this state. Not many states have five major urban areas. And urbanization and their economic activity is growing strong. Urbanization is eating up a lot of farmland that would, would have been in pasture land and would have been in cattle and uh, or crops. And uh, yes, that is affecting our ability to farm. We're having a lot of farmers to retire. The average age is quite old and, and a lot of farmers are retiring. But we're also more efficient about producing more output per acre or, or more, better cattle and all that, that we're more efficient than we ever have been and uh, our production is continues to grow, even though we're a smaller industry. Uh, so we're, we're still being very productive and very important part of the state's economy. You know, it, it's a beautiful day here for us to be on your farm, your family farm. And, and it, looking at this beautiful landscape, it doesn't seem like there's a, a shortage of acreage, right? But, but that's something we need to protect in rural communities then are these farms and family farms, is that right? Absolutely, high grain prices the last few years, we saw a lot of pasture land be turned under to put into grain. And now that grain prices are coming down and will be down for like three to four years uh, because of our overabundance of grain, uh, we expect some of that land to come back into pasture and hopefully uh, more cattle can be uh, put on that land. You know, I also, I also read recently that uh, that the new generation of young farmers, you were talking about farmers retiring, uh, like 78% of them come from non-farm backgrounds. So how important is the education? I mean, where are they gonna learn how to farm? Well, hopefully they're working with uh, an older farmer to learn some of the good farming practices. They're learning a lot of it in school too. 
uh, the growth of uh, ag students has been really strong. At the University of Tennessee, they just reported that uh, graduates out of UT Ag School have the second high starting salary, second only to the engineering students. So there's high demand. We're not producing enough uh, ag students out there. We're only producing about uh, two thirds of what we need. So we've got more ag students that uh, need to be in the industry uh, to address industry's needs. How do you, uh, let me just ask you, from the time that you were a young boy on this farm, did you ever envision that you would be the commissioner of agriculture no. for the state? No, I was always involved in 4-H and FFA and the community clubs. They were really strong uh, back in those days in, in the 60s. Uh, and that's really what inspired me. I loved agriculture. I showed calves. I, I did those kinds of things that, that a farm boy would do in that day and time. And it just, uh, it was a passion of mine in agriculture. It's the community I, I embraced, and uh, that was really the, the starting of my career. Let me just ask you how important you think technology is today to farming, and also not just to the farmer, but to the consumer. Well, we wouldn't be farming a lot of acres in Tennessee if it wasn't for the technology. No-till kind of farming that we've developed in West Tennessee that was a product of research out of the university uh, to plant uh, soybeans and cotton and all the other crops, no-till, kept a lot of cotton farmers in Crockett County in, in production or they wouldn't have been able to maintain the erosion rates that they needed to to comply with federal er erosion control efforts. Mm -hmm. So that technology alone has, has meant a lot. Now comes drone technology, which can play such a big role about uh, scouting our crops, scouting the timber for disease and, and for drought and for other things that affect our crops. Agriculture is, a, is quick to embrace technology. Uh, they're early adopters, farmers are, even though they're not often thought to be. Uh, they've been rewarded in the past by being early adopters of new technology and, and it's extremely important and we've got to continue uh, to invest. In, in 2050 we're going to have 9 billion people on this earth. Today we do not have the technology to feed that population. Do we have the wherewithal to uh, support research in agriculture to make sure that we do have that technology to grow what we need to grow for the population in 2050. We must do that as a, as a country and as a society to embrace the continued uh, monies going to research at the universities and in private industry. I think that's so, that's so true. I mean, it is, agriculture is everything, isn't it? Agriculture touches us in so many ways every day. Every day you wake up, you wake up with agriculture. That cotton sheet on your bed is the first place you touch agriculture. And then you go to the breakfast table and we can just continue to go on. But it's in every part of our lives and uh, we need to make sure that we protect that industry. It's basic to any economy. It's the basic industry in an, a, an economy that's growing up in, in a developing nation and we need to make sure that base in this country stays strong. You know, I, I, um, I, there's a lot of conversation about farm to table and agriculture and mindful eating and, you know, it, it's important for us to look at that. And I know, I know your department has looked at, you now have an app, right? That, yes. Um, that consumers can use to find fresh foods. So share a little bit about your thoughts on that. Well, it's a growing segment of our consuming population that they want to know their farmer to have fresh foods on their tables. And that's a very important segment, especially for young farmers who can satisfy that niche and extract a higher, uh, a higher price for their product than they would in the normal marketplace. But we can never feed the population of the world in that manner. It's great for us to to try to feed that segment of the, of the consuming public right now. But we're gonna to have to realize it's gonna take production agriculture doing the most it can to produce to feed the world in 2050. And what's the consumer's part of that? 
I mean, what, what can a person do that's just sitting at home watching today? What can they do? Well, first of all, I support farm to table and, and fresh food locally. It's, it's got to happen. You can, you can support that and, and support production agriculture uh, in its broadest sense through research and technology uh, by, by making sure those programs stay there for your future generations of your family. But it's all of it combined together. Everyone can't afford the prices of the fresh and local. They've got to go to the grocery store and get the uh, cheapest food they can for their family because of their income level. We've got to realize that. So it's a, it's a production scheme that works good for our young folks to sell for a higher margin to that consuming public. But otherwise, we've got to depend on production agriculture to feed the world. Do you, do you see, like in a rural region, do you see young people going towards farmers? Farming, do you see that as an industry now? Some, not as much as I would like to see. Uh, the biggest challenge to rural Tennessee today is broadband internet service. I mean, we're in that kind of a world this day and time. It's no longer community or state or national. We're in a world marketplace. Uh, we have 21 highly distressed counties in the state of Tennessee, and they're all rural. And I often wonder what would happen if you put gig level internet into those small towns and what would you attract business wise i believe it that element alone would help but uh, attract new jobs to those rural tennessee towns and the communities and and help folks uh, grow small industries within their uh, communities well because you really can nowadays if you can connect to the internet you can do business anywhere i know of a agriculturalists that's in the most rural part of East Tennessee, sitting on a mountaintop, trading dairy commodities all around this world and shipping dairy commodities to different countries, all because of the internet and, and uh, that process. So yeah, uh, it's important to everything and we've got to find a way of getting broadband service to our farms. Farms upload uh, information. Today we're farming with uh, GPS technology that we know the soil that's under the tractor at any one time we're rolling over that soil. We apply fertilizer according to the quality of the soil that's underneath that tractor and we apply a seed rate of the seeds according to the soil type that's underneath that soil to get the maximum efficiency we can. But at the same time we're using GPS technology to cut the cost of production by not over planting at the end of the rows and we're cutting fertilizer costs, we're cutting seed costs and at the end of the season the farmer saves enough money in some cases to pay for the increased technology. Wow. Do you just, do you, are you really proud when you go across this state and see all the different kinds of farming and agriculture that's going? We're a diverse state. There's different kinds of agriculture in East Tennessee, in Middle Tennessee, in West Tennessee. And we've got it all. We've got the highest technology out there. And yes, I'm very proud of our production level. I'm, I'm proud of how our, our research system has supplied the right kind of technology to our farmers. And they have responded with good production uh, levels. How do we rate in, in the country, in Tennessee? Oh, we're not a major uh, farm state at all, but uh, we have several, uh, uh, we're, we're a big livestock state, for instance. We're, we are a major grain producing state, especially in West Tennessee. And would you believe that we're the third largest tomato producing state in the country? Most folks don't no. realize that, but we produce abundance of tomatoes. We're behind uh, California and Florida. Wow. And we used to produce a lot more, but uh, because of uh, trade uh, uh, agreements and so forth, a lot of that production has been exported to uh, competitive countries. Commissioner, tell me a little bit about your family, about, you know, I know your, your wife's not from this area, right? That's right. She's from uh, Wayne County, Waynesboro, Tennessee, but it's a whole lot like this area. It's a uh, timber country, it's uh, rolling hills and so forth, and we met through some common friends, so. That's great. And you have children and grandchildren? Uh, two children. Uh, for some reason, 
and my wife and I still don't understand that. They both turned out to be engineers. Uh, my daughter is a mechanical engineer. She uh, works at Y-12 at Oak Ridge. And my son is a civil environmental engineer, and he works for uh, a large uh, firm in Nashville, Tennessee. So, uh, and they have, uh, among them, three grandchildren we're very proud of. Well, you must, you must have stressed math then somewhere in there. We did stress math because uh, through the 60s and 70s and 80s, uh, the big fact was that the United States doesn't compete well uh, in math. And, and it was something that we, we pushed hard. They got it and they exploited that math uh, ability that they had. So uh, yes, if you can read well, you surely can get math. And uh, we also uh, stressed reading. That's so important, isn't it? It is. Uh, yeah, I appreciate my governor for all of his emphasis on education and for the increased rigor and for the Tennessee promise, the ability to go to a higher degree out of high school. Uh, what used to be a high school degree is now a BS or something above high school degree to get be prepared for uh, the careers of the future. And we've got to realize that. And it's so important to have these higher credentialed uh, uh, careers for our, our students in the future. You know, welders are, are needed so badly this day and time. And a welder can come out of a technical school and make fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000 a year starting salary. That's great. And uh, there are other similar nursing shortages everywhere. Then also uh, the high-tech degrees down the road, uh, having an associate's degree is so important, or having the BES. Uh, we've got to get there to improve the job opportunity, especially the rural areas of this state. Yes, and I know the governor's got some other wonderful programs like Tennessee Reconnect and so many things yes. to just really get, get our region moving ahead. I know that you are uh, really civically engaged in your community in Columbia, Tennessee, where you live with your family, uh, with your wife, your kids are in other places. Um, and, you, and you've done a lot. You're on the UT Board of Trustees. You, you serve on the Tennessee Board of Regents. And all of that, though, really comes back to valuing education and also value, valuing family. It, don't you think? Well, when you're a young child, you look up to your family your, and your parents the closest ones to you. My grandfather was a county mayor of Fentress County. My father served on the school board in this county, was a leader there. Uh, my mother was a school teacher and, and was involved in all those activities surrounding school. We had strong community clubs uh, back then also, and all that piled on was, it's not just about me and what I'm doing, it's about us and how we develop this community and, and the place that we live to make it a better place. And yeah, I think it's so important. Uh, we don't get as much of that in this society this day and time. And whenever I retire, I want to go back to my community and I want to continue to give. Uh, one thing I've really enjoyed through the Tennessee Promise is the mentoring program. I mentor, mentored seven boys last year uh, through that process. And really what I was mentoring more than the boys was just as much mentoring the parents because they had not gone through that process of getting prepared for a higher schooling. And it's an elementary thing to do, but it's still, you, you, you're you sort of intimidated by it. Mm -hmm. But mentoring is an important process of the Tennessee Promise. It's also an important process for those children who go home to nothing, who go home to no encouragement, no hope, no food, not an encouraging a pat on the back. They need to be mentored, and I want to start a program in my community that helps those folks, those children, uh, have some hope for the future. Thank you for that, because I think that's true. Children really need to know they have a caring, consistent adult, and you can do that as a mentor. Right. Um, just in the little bit of time we have left, can you share with me what, what's next for you or what you hope to accomplish that maybe you haven't quite done yet? Well, we developed a 10-year strategic plan for agriculture in this state and the rural challenge, the governor's rural challenge, and I want to continue to uh, measure our success, reevaluate it every year to make sure that uh, we continue on track. Uh, what that 10-year strategic plan, more than anything else has done, is brought the entire agriculture community together behind a specific plan, a specific map for the future. 
And uh, that's really important that the industry is together, united. And continue to measure, try to find ways of uh, tweaking that uh, strategic plan to make something happen. And I think there's some good things getting ready to pop out of that plan uh, that will make a difference in, in rural Tennessee. And we're just hopeful that comes for, to fruition. That's great. Well, thank you, Commissioner. I hope you'll, you know what? I hope you'll come back to the Upper Cumberland more often, okay? Yeah, me too. Okay. Absolutely. All right. This program was made possible by contributions to your PBS station from viewers like you. Thank you.